It's seven o'clock and um, I'm Maya Hasegawa. I'm chair of the development review board and I'm gonna call this meeting of um, November 17th to order. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start out with a few um, rules about um, participants that are not board members. And then I'm going to read a set of opening remarks, which are um, some legal things that have to do with the uh, um, board and this hearing. And um, at some point, I'm going to ask anybody who's going to speak to um, affirm an oath. So when that happens, you can unmute yourselves and um, take the oath online. So um, if you are not a member of the board, can you please unmute your, uh, mute yourselves until you take the oath or you speak? It's time for you to speak. You can have your picture up, but don't but please mute yourself. Okay. At the DRB, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro and appeals of zoning administrator decisions. Procedurally, the Development Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your opportunity to comment on and provide evidence relating to an application. In the event our decision is appealed to the environmental court, the court will not take any addition or consider additional testimony at its hearings but we'll look at the evidence from our hearings, the regulations, and determine if the evidence supports the findings and decisions of this board. Only interested persons that participate in this proceeding may appeal a decision made by the board. So I strongly encourage all of you to speak up. As we are on the record, we are going to ask that you affirm your testimony will be truthful. So will the applicants and anyone wishing to speak, um, or even if you just might speak, please unmute yourselves and prepare to take the oath. And it would be helpful if those who are gonna speak would put their video on so I can see that you raise your hand affirmatively. And I don't know who's on the phone, Jamie Anderson is on the okay. phone. So, Mr. McAllister? Yes. Mr. Jamie Anderson? Yes. Rod Chase, Brian Bradley, you need to, I need to be able to see you. But for some reason, um, I cannot start my video. I'm in the same boat. Mr. Chase, Mr. Mr. Bradley. Okay, what I'm gonna to have to do is the people I can't see, I'm gonna ask you individually to affirm that you've taken the oath. Okay, so everybody that I can see, um, could you please repeat, uh, please affirm the following. I hereby affirm that the evidence I give in the cause under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalty of perjury. 
So everybody that I can see, please raise your hand and affirm. Okay. I do. Okay, thank you. Mr. McAllister. Yes. Okay. Jamie Anderson. I do, yes. Rod Chase. Who's on mute? Mr. Chase. Mr. Chase. Okay, well, you see, um, and Mr. Anderson, you affirmed, right? Yeah. Uh, if Ms. Somebody please from the board remind me if Mr. Chase speaks that he has to be sworn at that time. Um, okay, everybody, you can mute yourselves again. Thank you very much. Okay, after taking testimony, oh, I lost my place here. Applicants require a majority vote of the full board to succeed. That is four votes out of seven. We currently have five, five board members present, the possibility of a sixth and our seventh member is not able to attend, but he has agreed that if necessary, he will um, view the video and um, will register a vote at that time. But we do have five voting members here. Um, if we do not have a full board present, we will then consider a request to continue your application to the next public meeting. After taking testimony, the board will close the hearing and may vote on your application. The board will issue a written decision within 45 days of the close of the hearing. While we may vote on an application, it is the written decision that controls the timeline for appeal. It should be noted that the town of Brattleboro is a party with an interest in land development applications. The town does not have a special status before this board. Documents provided to the board by the town planning department, town attorney, or other town departments will be considered in exactly the same way as information from the applicant and all other interested parties. I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 20th. Move that we approve the minutes for the October 20th meeting. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, Gary and Nora. No. Actually, it was me, but that's all right. Catherine, you don't have any video? There we go. Unmute yourself. You're muted. I, I did. And I said I, I made a motion, but. Okay, I couldn't see you. I said it and... before I did. Yeah, it's fine. Fine. No problem. <coughs> Okay, all in favor of approving um, the minutes, please signify by saying aye when I call on you. John? John? Aye. Michael? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nora? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Maya? Aye. So that's six eyes. And the motion passes. Okay. Um, has the uh, meeting been properly warned, Brian? Yes, it has. Okay. Um, are there any conflicts of interest 
for ex parte communications. Michael. Yes, on uh, 2021-165. Okay. Okay. Um, Michael will be recusing himself from that um, that vote, and we will proceed to discuss twenty twenty one one sixty five, um, which is Vermont Redevelopment LLC request for site plan approval to construct a brewery at. 239 Old Ferry Road. Do any board members have any questions? If because I I will start if no one has anything pressing. Um, who is presenting the case? Robin, are you presenting? Apparently I am. Okay, can you just briefly talk to us about what the um, project is about? Sure. Um, so it's a roughly 37,000 plus or mostly minus um, square foot uh, building for a new brewery. Um, it's mostly production. There will be a small tasting room, um, so there will be some public invited into the building, but it's not a public building. Um, it's on a site that's been developed. Um, the Right now, Walker Roofing is on it um, in the white building, and there's a field to the right, so we wanted to develop, or the owner of the property wanted to develop that field. Um, <laughs> There's access, there's a 50 foot um, piece of property to the right of the, our property that uh, is access to the photovoltaic um, array. So that would main, remain. And uh, let's see, what else is there to say? Uh, there'll be some shipping, but it's in an industrial zone. It makes use of um, existing industrial area. Um, the, basically, the, the building will be um, uh, concrete forms, insulated concrete forms, but uh, we're going to um, side it so that it doesn't look like uh, just a concrete block wall. And uh, I, I'm not sure what else to say, Maya. Okay. Uh, questions? I'll start. I, I noticed, I drove by there today and I noticed there's excavation going on. Has the project started already? Phil, do you want to answer that part? Because the... Find my mute button here. Hi, I'm, I'm Phil Savoy. I'm one of the engineers on the project. Um, there was some excavation started to, uh, there's a lot of soil that had to be removed to where we're gonna go because it was like a big hunk of gravel there. Uh, there's been no, other than earthwork, there's no uh, building or construction has taken place yet. Just excavating the site where the building would go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, can, have... Can, I have a question. Can Brian, Brian, can you speak to, did you know this was happening already? And like the timeline of this excavation before getting approval from the board? 
Um, I noticed that they were doing excavation last week and drove by to confirm that they were using um, erosion control and to in fact confirm that they were doing excavation and they have been disposing of the soil, I believe that further down on Putney Road, uh, close to Landmark Hill Drive. And it looks like they must have been digging for a couple of weeks. So did they have all the permits they needed to do all this no, work? No, they don't. Excavation and site preparation is also included in land development. So they are in violation of the regulations currently. So what are the penalties for that? Um, we have some uh, discretion, but typically the fees for a project would be doubled. Okay. I... I have a couple of questions. One, I mean, and and then one comment, which the, my comment is that we got a lot of material very late. We got material this afternoon at four yeah. o'clock. And I don't know, I don't even know if all the board members have had a chance to look at it. I haven't had time um, to really digest most of this. <laughs> yeah. And um, so... I would like to propose to the board um, that we split this application and approval in half and that we think about approving um, right now, the location, um, the parking, even though I have a couple questions about parking and um, the whole loading dock area. Um, and then we, we have you come back at some point and look at the landscaping and the frontage of the, of the proposed building. Uh, have you gotten state um, approval, um, stormwater approval yet? Um, do you want to answer this or? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take it. Um, the uh, the stormwater permit, it doesn't trigger the state stormwater permit because of the size of the project. It does constrict, con, it does trigger a construction permit with the state, which uh, I have to ask Ron, I'm not sure if that's been applied for yet or not. Uh, the water supply and wastewater permits have been approved and granted by the state. I'm talking about stormwater and the um, what you're going to do with snow and all that kind of stuff. We, we haven't gotten anything really on that. Um, and depending upon what the state says in terms of their construction permit, you might have to change what goes on in the front of the building. Well, what we submitted today, the last minute is all the stormwater drainage, final. Um, I know final that's grading. what we haven't had a chance to review. Right, right. But it, it okay. does include everything that the state needs and then everything that's required by the state for stormwater and construction permits. But okay, it, it was, come to you a little late yes a little late <laughs> so what what i would like to propose is that since you've submitted to to the state you come back to us after the state has approved or made changes or whatever they're going to do and then you come back to us and we can take a look at it um, uh, because i i'm not sure the board um, has had a chance to, a sufficient chance to review it um, and to think about it and to even look at the site plans. Um, so we've been getting everything piecemeal. And Catherine? Um, I would like to consider us to go into the executive meeting on this. That, that's, 
Um, we don't actually have a have the meeting set up so that we have a separate link for doing a deliberative session. Um, okay, so, so I would like to have the board maybe has set up another Zoom link sometime uh, with you know the next couple of days to do it because I'm not happy right now. So a special executive me, I see what you're saying, Cap. So we could really get all the facts, all the information, because like I said, this was just pieced together a little by and it's, this project has been going on without us knowing. Yeah, I know. So that, so that taking that into consideration, I think with all due respect to the board and to the prospectors that we need to really look into this a little bit more deeper before we make any final decision. Uh, I don't know if the board agrees with that. Do, no, I feel the you, same way, Gary. Do you feel do you feel that um, we can at least approve um, the location that they can have? I, I really would like to there? get more information, Maya, before I even say yay. I, I, do, I would have to abstain from that. So I I think we should um, consider going into executive session on yeah. this as well with Catherine, but I'd like to ask a few questions first. Okay. So we have more information about the intentions. Um, I agree with Catherine. I'm very um, not happy about this whole process. This has been in front of us last month and partly the month before it's been continued. And we get the information partly today. This isn't acceptable. I mean, there is a process and how we get this before we can come to a yeah. agreeable I, I, solution. And I think we should do this in an executive session before we talk about this any further, honestly. Okay, so there's no feeling that you can at least approve no. um, the fact that they're allowed to have a brewery there. I mean, within the regs, they're allowed to have a brewery. What it looks like and what um, we do with the stormwater and all that other kind of stuff is not relevant to whether they're simply allowed to have a brewery there. Um, I think what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be okaying their, their site plan. Is that well, part of correct? approving the site plan is is approving um, what they're going to do there. I mean, I, I understand people's frustration, but um, I, I, I'm no, I'm I don't feel frustrated. I feel <sighs> we're approving something. This is my feeling that we are. They're trying to get approval for something that they've already started that they should have gotten approval for in the first place and did not. Uh, could I jump in for a moment? Yes. Sure. So the, the board always evaluates applications on conformance to the regulations. And that happens, you know, how we want that to happen as well before something begins construction or clearance or any anything else. However, even if the project were completed, you would still be obligated to evaluate it in terms of conformance with the regulations. And you know, if work has begun, it's possible you won't approve that work because it does not conform and then they will have to modify what they have been doing. But if it does conform, then you should approve it on that basis without any regard to the zoning violation. And that's something the planning department will pursue separately and they'll pay those whatever penalty has arrived at. So before we decide whether we're going to, to in, before we decide whether we're going to go into executive session, um, I have some questions about the project itself. Um, the parking, how many spaces how did you arrive at the number of spaces that you've counted? 
which means there was something in the submission that said you didn't have to have an EV charger because you didn't have enough yeah. parking spaces. Um, and I want to know how that was arrived at. Maya, I don't think we wrote anything about not having a charging station. Okay. Um, we arrived at 39 state, um, 38 to 39 spaces um, from uh, the zoning regulations for the square footage and the use. Okay. Are you planning to have an electric um, vehicle charging station? We, we could put that in. I, I didn't think of it. I think you should put it, you should have you should put it. Sure, we can do that. I think the only thing we talked about were where the bicycles were gonna go. I didn't see that in the application either. It's in this thing. The one we got today? No, this one came back in October. The uh, site plan approval application, the written narrative, And there's ADA find accessibility, right? About... Is there ADA accessibility to this facility as well? Yes, yes, okay. there is. And that's also mentioned in the narrative as well. And there's um, on site plan A0, as well as Ron's plan, um, which is the one with the contours and the, um, the one that you got today. Uh, both of those show that there's um, two ADA accessible spaces um, and in the narrative, it talks about it being accessible on um, the employee entrance and also um, the front entrance to the, the facility. Okay, you do say the bicycle storage to the right of the main entrance. Okay. But an e electrical vehicle charging station um, should be added, I think. You know. um, I understand that the silos, which were um, in the setback, are going to be moved. Is that true? Yes, to the other side of the building. Okay. And they're 12 foot diameter. And how high are the lighting poles going to be? Are they going to be on the building or are they going to be on poles? Or are there are wall packs on the building. And there's a lighting plan uh, on both AO and also the lighting designer gave us one that we submitted. Um, and it shows the, um, the amount of lumens total and then there's one that looks like a Death Star, and that shows it at night with the um, lighting around the building. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Death Star. Yeah. So, what is that? <laughs> and we're, we're within the um, amount of lumens. We're below, below the maximum amount of lumens. Brian, what is this dark spot that's on my paperwork? That's the building. That's the that's the building. That's yes. the building, and it shows the lighting. The lighting around it. So those are the the wall packs, and then the front are the cylinder lights. And I I gave um, cut sheets of the um, fixtures we were proposing. Robin, quick question: As far sure. as a I was looking at your renewable or anything sustainable as far as putting any solar. I mean, no, it's not a regulatory thing right now. Have you considered putting any solar array on the roof or anything like that in the area? There was discussion about it, and uh, 
one of the things that we were talking about doing was putting any of the um, HVAC equipment on the roof. And then we started talking about uh, having access to the roof and um, working some of our other, other brewery um, uh, equipment so that because we need a, a specific height um, for some of it is 26 feet uh, sorry 23 feet and then uh, 18 feet for storage so there's a condenser unit um, above the uh, cold storage area right and then we have equipment to balance the um, uh, heating and ventilating for the the space there's a lot of um, humidity that we're dealing with. And I was just sure looking why. at the energy consumption and I was considering perhaps a substitute for that since we're, le we're leading in that direction. There's a lot of new buildings that are coming in. Bill, do you remember why it was crossed off? It was a large roof, but not enough for what we're dealing with. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we do have some equipment going up there. And the, the rubber roof manufacturer didn't really like the idea of the panels on the roof. He's had issues with it, but um, it didn't seem to be cost effective. It was basically the reason, I think. Okay, thank you, Phil. I think there was a fire department memo. Did you see that? Have you seen that? So um, you'll be able to comply with all of those things. Submit something to show how you're going to comply. Yes. That included roof access from the inside. Right? Yes. Thanks, Maya. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Are there any other questions from members of the board? That was FW Webb's stuff. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess, go any further i guess i don't know we'll have to really look deeper into this because i was looking at some things about uh potential brewing odors how your waste is being managed and how you're getting rid of that so those are issues that also come into consideration um so they have a may i answer this maya i'm sorry i didn't ask permission sure uh, you don't need to just okay. answer um so there's a, a, a Jonathan Carpenter, who is the designer of the brewery part in California. And I guess that's all he does. I didn't know it was a job. And uh, he has it so that all of the spent um, mash and grains are all kept inside the facility. Mm -hmm. So, and also it's in an industrial area by the dump. So it doesn't already, it's a little bit um, compromised for a location, but um, all that spent grain, it gets, um, and I think I mentioned it in the narrative as well, um, that that goes to local farmers, the, the mash, there's a, apparently a pig farmer nearby who picks that up, um, but it's all enclosed and it stays inside the facility. Uh, that's what the at grade loading dock door, there's a spent mm -hmm. grains area there, and apparently it, it's all contained. So there's a contract already or an agreement with a farmer to take the? Apparently it's somebody that they've been using um, and it's, I honestly, I don't know who it is, but I, there's a, some pig farmer around here who takes the spent grains. I, he used to take McNeil's and now he's taking these. Um, it's probably the same gentleman who takes the stuff for the thrush downstairs. Okay. Very downstairs. He's probably the same guy. Yeah. He he recently went out of business because of um, clean water violations. Mm. Oh, that guy. Oh. Yes. Huh. So I guess it's not that guy anymore. 
So that's probably something that I, I don't know whether Write that's that in our purview or not, but probably it is part of performance standards. Um, we'll need to know how the spent grain and mash are going to be disposed of. Okay. So I had two last questions and then Robin, I'm done, Meyer. One was signage. Uh, this says the board is recommended to ask the applicant to clarify whether signage is intended. So um, that also is in the narrative. Um, hold on. Uh, we are proposing a sign on the building less than 64 square feet. Um, with directional signs for the loading dock to make up the remaining 64 squeet, sorry, square feet, not squeet, uh, square for uh, 64 square feet allowance. The actual design will be submitted for administrative approval. They don't really um, have a have a sign yet or any any idea on marketing. I think that's in the works, logo and that stuff. Do members of the board have any other questions? No, Jonathan? No. No. So, um, What is the board's pleasure as to how we proceed? Do you want to go into executive session um, at some, which will be at some later date, if we can find, hopefully no, we'll I, find I, a I day when we're I available. Want it, I don't want us to draw it out. I beg your pardon. I didn't hear you. Well, Brian seemed to make it very clear that, you know, it seems to be we're only we're only meeting to let them know that it's OK for them to put a brewery there. That's the only thing we're OK. That was my impression that well, from what Brian said. Is that not true, Brian? No, I'm the one that said that I'm the one that suggested that we um no say that brian this... actually came on and told me when i went into my whole thing about he said when it, we, we, it's just because to let them know that it's a, it was that the ordinance says that they can have it there and that's what brian said and we could not that they could not we're okay in the building that they're going to put there or anything else we're just saying that's okay for them to proposed to put a building there. Um, so Steve is trying to set up a link for a deliberative session. So the board might be able to hold one after the public hearings is complete today. So I would suggest closing the hearing and preferably, hopefully we'll be able to do that this evening. Okay with me, it's okay with everybody else. Okay, is there a, a motion to, um, I, don't, I don't know how exactly how to word this, um, to suspend the hearing until the board has a chance to meet in deliberative session? I motion that we suspend the meeting until we discuss this in executive session. It's not executive session, it's a deliberative session. A deliberative section. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor of approving the motion that we suspend until we have a chance to meet in deliberative session, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. So, we're going to go into um, deliberative session at some point, and um, we can we will come back 
with some kind of decision. Um, Thank you. At that point. Okay. So can we move on to um, 2021-181 FW Webb and Company request for site plan and local Act 50 approval? My papers are going all over. Um, who is presenting this plan? Yeah, I'll mute myself. Um, I, I will be presenting. I'm John Goodell from SBE Associates. Um, and Mark McAllister, the manager of the local <clears throat> FW Web Stores, you know, with us tonight somewhere down there. There you are. Hi, Mark. And then uh, Jamie Anderson from um, Greenleaf Construction well, was the um, construction project manager on this job. So I'm, you know, working closely with both those guys. Um, but, um, you know, Mark, maybe you wanted to say a, a couple words about, you know, that your business is going and you need to expand and then I'll take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, Maya, did uh, we, they take the oath? Uh, yes. yes, I did. Yes, okay. they did. Okay. Um, yeah, just to start off, we've been in Brattleboro since uh, uh, 1986. Um, back in 1999, we built the building where we where we currently are up in the industrial park. Um, and uh, you know, in the last 20 years, we've uh, quickly outgrown the the facility. So um, we have looked at uh, other means of, uh, of growing as far as looked at other properties in Brattleboro. We finally decided that uh, uh, that property there in the industrial park is the best place for us. And um, we've, we've brought in uh, some good people and I think we've come up with a pretty good plan where we can grow there uh, to suit our needs and our customers' needs, which uh, you know, definitely benefits Brattleboro. And uh, you know, look forward to uh, you know, working with the board to get this project moving. Oh, this is really interesting. Okay, sounds good. Um, now, I was thinking that if we can figure out how to do the screen share, I could talk and we could be looking at the site plan and I could kind of give you an overview with the visual. Um, usually it works pretty well, but... Um, yeah. That would be great. I think I, I think I need Steve's help on this, maybe. John, if you go to the bottom of the screen and you run your cursor over, there's a, a green tab that will yep. pop up. So just... OK, I think I'm all set here with everything. Let me get the right one up. Uh, I'll try doing a, something like that. There we go. Yeah. OK, let me hit share. Okay, you don't need that. Okay, now you tell me if this is visible to everybody. Is that something you can see? Not yet. No. All right, so let me see. That's fully expanded. Let me go back over here. Ah. That's what I missed. Here we are. There we go. Okay, now we're in business. Um, all right, let's make a few adjustments here. Just trying. Oh, that's not terrible. Um, okay, well, I guess we can see it. So, um, right at the very highest level, um, we're requesting site plan and Act 250 approval for an expansion at the uh, existing FW website um, on in the exit one industrial park. Um, and um, the, the, the gist of it is um, they have a an existing um, uh, 60 by 150 or 9,000 plus or minus square foot building. And they're looking to add a uh, 100 by 150 addition to that to make a, for a 15,000 uh, square foot addition. So total footprint becomes 24,000. Um, the 
gross areas for a warehouse and uh, other spaces are um, are more because there's a mezzanine level inside. So that's you know how those numbers um, you know add up. Um, on this site plan, um, and actually, uh, here, let me go here. So this is the existing conditions plan that shows um, uh, this is our existing building. And please let me know if you can't see me or something and I'm talking, so I just want to be sure everyone can see. But currently they have this existing building, um, parking and uh, outside yard area. So that's that's what's there today. And then this is you know what their, their plan is to go to. This is, can you see this hand by the yes. way? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is the uh, expanded, proposed expanded area. And then the yard, um, I think it might be slightly larger, um, but it effectively it gets displaced by this. So everything kind of moves over. Um, so this is exterior storage yard for, you know, um, fuel tanks and, um, you know, like a, like a plumber would need to replace someone's tank. So big items that they need to store outside, take up a lot of space, that type of thing. Um, and <clears throat> let's see, um, as an overview, the project includes, okay, let's go back to the previous one. We have the building expansion, we have the yard relocation, and then we also, that goes with that, we have additional parking area here in the front and a little more on the sides, and then a, a revised access to get to the yard because we're coming over to this side. So there's that, you know, revised access, you know, there and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so you have you have other parking spaces further away. Is that true? In um, the, along the um, in the back, I you can't see me pointing. Um, I, know, I know what you're talking about. So our our primary, um, the essential primary initial parking is here, and yes, these up here are overflow supplemental, um, basically. And then these over on this side are, um, you know, there are parking spaces there now, but they're dedicated, or the intent is they'll be marked and dedicated for employee parking. Um, but yes, we do have some parking spaces on this side. Kind of the core of the parking is here. Um, and not, not to jump around too much, but the, the, the idea there was, you know, for this existing site, putting the uh, the employee parking over on this side is good because they're going to come in in the morning and leave at night. Now it minimizes how much walking across in front of the sort of dock area there is. Um, for the most part, you know, contractors are going to kind of trickle in over the course of the day and park, get their stuff, and then, you know, out they go. Uh, in the event that there is you know, a bunch of folks or a busy something happening, you know, that would be when, of course, you're going to see the additional over here. And and it, it was a case of that's kind of the best we could do. Um, but I think it's reasonable because they're not traveling um, across a necessarily like a busy area. The, the uh, deliveries tend to load up and a, a couple or three, they tend to go out in the morning and then we'll come back and this type of thing, but it's not, it's not a very high volume of truck traffic coming. But the, the concept there was we'll put employee parking on this side, sort of just split that whole flow out of it, try and keep the bulk of folks right close to the building. So they're just going in and coming out. There's ADA parking accessible right up front. Um, and then we needed a little bit more um, to get to our, our requirement as which happens to dovetail with what they were looking for, 34 parking spaces. And that, you know, was calculated by the, the zoning ordinance for, for each of those uses. Mm -hmm. And it worked out exactly to, you know, the required 34 spaces. Um, and then I guess since we're, since we're talking about parking, I, I'll, I'll shift back to like my description of the site, but um, in the previous application, you mentioned the, um, the charging station not applicable um, item, which was us. Um, I, if I recall correctly, that's what I put in the application. And I was referring 
for a electric vehicle charging station. And I was referring to a section of the rules that on page 340 of the zoning ordinance, there's a, um, a section that just says development will, that will create more than 40 parking spaces for residents yeah. or employees must provide at least one electrical vehicle charging station for 20 parking spaces. We have no objection. I, and, and these guys, the guys can chime in. Originally, I had vehicle charging stations on there. It was more as a matter of process by reading this. I said, oh, well, I guess if I don't, it's not my position necessarily to volunteer it if I don't, if we're not obligated because everything costs money. If in fact, we are obligated to provide it, I'm confident they're not gonna have an issue. We are planning on installing the conduit for it anyways. Um, so just to kind of- Yeah, you, you said in your application that you, you were planning a conduit for future um, use. So, and, and you yeah, are right, under the threshold. Okay. Yep, that's Sorry. right. We, we said we'd put the conduit in in case so it would be easier in the future in case the demand is there, or the, the need right. is there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just, I didn't know if it, there was a, if we were, if we were actually required, I just wanted to be clear that it, it, we don't oppose it. We're just trying to be efficient and cost effective, you know, in our, in our design. Well, you might uh, consider that it would make your place a, a more attractive place for employees to come to. Yeah, fair regardless, of, regardless of the regulations. Yeah, I'm fair bet. It may not be long before guys are buying the new Ford electric pickup. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the expansion of parking areas here, uh, expanded yard on this side. And of course, um, they had to make this site work. I mean, so they basically were not able to find a nice flat, large industrial with good access site in Brattleboro or in an area that works. Um, so there's a bunch of fill um, is what, you know, is uh, obviously that's a, a dominant element, you know, of this project. Um, but, but at the same time, I think we did a, I think we got a reasonable um, site for them that gives them what they need and, um, you know, kind of keeps them um, growing. Um, talking, I guess we can shift a little bit to stormwater. I mean, there's some some things going on um, stormwater wise for the site. We very much do need a uh, state stormwater permit um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and so we're in that process, um, you know, of obtaining that and that we will be def I think we defer to that under the zoning rules for our stormwater criteria, but just to kind of properly explain it, here's kind of what's going on there. So we have a couple of different things and, and, and this is all driven by our, the state stormwater requirements. So there's five, of, five essential requirements and we have to, for this site, because we're a part of a larger site, you know, the, the entire exit one, um, development, we have to hit all of them or we have to address all of them. And they, they basically are um, groundwater recharge. You have to infiltrate a certain amount of your runoff from your, from your site. Um, small storms or water quality volume, um, which again, it's the one inch storm. And then there's a channel protection, um, which is aimed at that 2.4, 2.46 inch storm basically just big enough a storm where it can start to erode channels downstream. So you need to catch that and hold it um, for 24 hours or slowly release it out so that those storms are not degrading channels you know, downstream. And then on top of those two um, or those three, we have um, requirements for the 10 year storm and the 100 year storm where uh, when we're finished, it has to be what is there match current or less in terms of our maximum runoff rates. So, so that's that's why you have a, um, that that retention pond? Exactly. Is, is for, okay. Yep, and so we have, um, we have two essential elements. We have this um, infiltration chambers under the yard, um, which capture um, this, or it's a little more than, no, I think it's, it's the entire new roof. Our, our, the ridge line is about at the old edge of the building. So this whole roof is captured 
and goes into this infiltration area, which again, for that small storm, um, it infiltrates the, the water quality storm. Um, and, and again, this is you know, driven by meeting our, our state requirement for a recharge, but we, we get the recharge taken care of here. And then the remaining criteria we take care of um, in this, it's actually a bit more complicated than a, like a typical um, detention pond. It's actually a, um, it's a gravel wetland with um, extended detention above it. And, and the reason for that is, again, from our, our state rule, if you can't do infiltration, which we couldn't on a big scale here because we didn't have that great soils, that those are all tier one um, treatment devices. This is a tier two. You go to the next one, which is a gravel wetland, which is basically, it has, well, more than 24 inches of stone in the bottom. And so for small storms, they'll, they'll flow in flow through that, st that stone and gradually um, trickle out. Um, but the stone will always stay saturated. So a good chunk of this is going to have wetland vegetation growing and so forth. As you get to your bigger storms, that same effect happens, but then you get greater and greater ponding. So then you effectively get a detention pond sitting on a wetland. And that one, um, up until the, even the channel protection storm doesn't does not hit the overflow. It's only the larger storms where you would actually see overflow, um, like in a typical way, um, you know, flowing over the the you know the overflow top and, and going out. Even the channel protection storm flows in mm. um, ponds, mm. and it's all, it's actually only a one inch orifice um, that it you know it tricks trickles out over an extended period of time. Um, so so there's you know there's there's any number of moving parts, but that's um, that's the concept associated with this. And actually, on my list of things to mention tonight is so this is the plan as presented. Um, just to confirm or clarify, um, so we have since tinkered with these grades a little bit, and I can show you. It, it's not a significant change, but I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and show you what we're. I can find it. There we go. So this is final design. So there's an awful lot of requirements for everything from the, the stone volume to each of those storm volumes and four bay volumes and all sorts of things, as well as we needed to get a, a, a walk. So someone can reasonably walk around this thing and inspect it. So now there's a four foot strip kind of around the edges and so forth. So going back to the, the as submitted version, Oops, um, very similar. This has a four bay, you know, this has a similar pond, but now our edge of grading is a little bit further out and kind of hugs, you know, this line here. Um, okay. And uh, let's see, I think that's, those are kind of the, the key elements. Um, I was thinking, I have a couple things to mention, and then I was thinking I would just go through each of our, um, items on the narrative, because that tends to kind of walk us through each of our criteria, compatibility and um, access and so forth. And if, I don't want to take too much time, but if, if that sounds good, then I'll try and do it quickly. Can, um, can, can, we, can I interrupt to ask if there are any board members that have any questions so far? I guess one question, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. <laughs> solar, how we, how we, did you guys factor any of that in as far as any uh, sustainable usage for energy or anything? Yeah, like yeah. Well, um, so, and we're gonna, we're gonna have this conversation again with Act Two Hundred and Fifty because this is all going through the Act Two Hundred and Fifty process, right? Um, and um, they are, and, and Jamie can can jump in too. What we talked about is setting up all the electrical panels. Um, in a way that it's it's there's space on the wall and it's sort of logical um, to add. I know cost benefit right now is is a significant issue um, as far as it, again, if they have to, if it's an obligation, if it's a written obligation they must do, then I'm sure they they will address all the obligations they have. If it's a um, if it's a choice, 
then as a business, they have to look at cost benefit. Um, but so that I, that's where things are right now on that item is um, setting up the the controls and the and the the new panels and all those things with the intent that there is a way to plumb solar in. Um, mm -hmm. But but they're not planning to include solar with the project currently. Yeah, there's no requirement. That right, that's what I was about to say. There's no requirement solar. of regulatory on that as of, yeah. as of yet. Yeah, and it may change. I mean, our world right, is exactly. Huge. But it's. I think it's good that you're thinking about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're heading in that direction, so that's good that you have considered that. That's that's good news. Does anybody else have um, any questions? <sighs> I can't see everybody right now. John, Nora? No, no. good. Okay, I I just have a couple questions and I'm, I'm not sure you need to go through your application um, because we've had plenty of time to read through everything. Um, on, on, Gary was asking about the solar and energy efficiency and um, we suggest that you might want to consult with Efficiency Vermont to see if they have any suggestions or any any uh, anything else that they think you should do, be doing. It's 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 a suggestion for us yeah, from I'm us. Just, and maybe just a. A sidebar to that again through our we've had extended discussions about our act 250 application because now that process is not just meeting commercial building energy standards and that's that's kind of the baseline and the, the wording in the current guidance for an act 250 application is basically telling us what else you're doing as well so it is a, a very essential item so they've done a number of things internally um as far as using variable speed fans and uh, a number of different controls type things for their HVAC, you know, folks um, aimed at at this item because it's it's just part of our culture. It's going to be. It is, you know, part of what's yeah, required. Yeah, energy efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They might have yep. other solutions and other ideas for energy cost savings for you as well, uh, which would be beneficial. They might have other incentives to offer. So I would might like to add that also as part of make it might something to look into down the road as well also for the future. So um and you've gotten the fire department memo, right? So Actually, I can, no, I have not seen that. Was that mailed or was it emailed or I I don't know, Brian. Did I think we got an email. It is in our pack. Uh, John, I might have neglected emailing that to you. Um, it had just three minor items on it. You need a state construction permit. You need a hatch from the inside of the building onto the roof. And they want you to upgrade to a radio alarm box, which they're requiring of all new buildings. Right. So Brian will get you a copy of that. Okay. Um, and the only I'll other question I have is, um, I don't know if you have any employees who might at some point want to ride a bicycle with, you know, we have all these electric bikes and everything now. Um, and you might think about putting in a bike rack. Yeah, um, we, we did. Okay. Yeah. Here's a... Uh... We, we called it out. I guess the picture isn't great, but um, we did at least call it Oh, I missed that. Yeah, it's pretty totally. small. But, you know, kind of- I see it now. Of, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Anybody from the board? Is there anything else you want to tell us? Oh, there is. Um, so uh, I don't maybe I don't need to go through all the items, but um, I do have a correction. Um, 
And it's a correction to um, the uh, traffic numbers that I put down and that the numbers on the Schedule D, um, accepting the peak hour are correct. The Schedule D, um, or maybe I'll just flip right to it so I can, are, are, the, are the vehicles coming to the site? So that's the number of vehicles. I put down the total number of vehicles that are coming to the site. So I put down an existing 45 are coming to the site. That is actually 90 one-way trips because if each employee that comes to work makes a trip there and a trip out. So I believe I should have put down 90 for that. And then similarly for the proposed, um, uh, so existing is 45 and I should have put 90. Proposed is only 60, 15 more, and that should be 120. Okay. I mean, the big picture is we're talking about a, a very modest change from what they're currently doing, but I believe you know, those numbers should be twice what they are because it's ask requests for one-way trips, not the Round number. Trip. Yeah. yeah, right. So okay. that's the correction. Yeah. That's fine. Um, one other thing, the exterior lighting. Um, can you provide um, more information to Brian about, um, what am I looking for? Um, the mounting, the, the lighting will be on the, on the building. Is that correct? Oh, we have building well um pretty limited on the building we have some under canopy and then here let me zoom in on this wait this is the landscape well this isn't terrible let me go to the lighting plan uh, i guess the landscape plan is probably better we can we can go to the lighting plan and look at light levels but uh here's so we have exterior lights on a pole here here and here. And, and we, this was actually a, a bit of an exercise in that, um, so our, our goal, you know, sort of, you know, following dark sky guidance and others, we, we are trying to find, trying to deliver uniform low levels of light. And the only good way to do that is by having spaced out lights. In other words, it'd be a lot more cost effective to have a you know, big lights on the front of the building, but you can't, then you have super bright on one side as well as it's kind of pointing the wrong way and so forth. So, um, so we worked through that quite a bit to get to the, the light levels we're showing, you know, low lights here with very little, like there are no um, proposed lights over this whole section of the building over here. We've got an exterior light downcast at this door and then same thing or on this door and then some under can canopy lighting here. And then it's it's just dispersed from these other lights here to, to provide a sort of a uniform low level of light. Um, basically just trying to hit the minimums that are needed for just safety on a folks coming to work early, it's cloudy, this type of thing. You need some minimum levels um, for pe move, people moving around a site, you know, kind of thing. So I, I may have got going on my own topic there and missed your question now that no, that's how um, how tall are the poles? Let's see. I think these are twenty foot poles. Let me look at the lighting plan. So they're they're basically the same height as street lights. Yes. Yeah, very very typical. Yeah. Okay. We do have your lighting plan someplace. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of tough to read unless you're looking at the PDF because you got to really zoom in. Oh yeah, here it is. It's on the it's on the fixtures. Here we go. Yeah, those oh, are yeah. eighteen. Yep. Yeah, these are eighteen feet. So okay. up here. Yeah. Okay. And on the PDF, if you zoom in, then you can see kind of what's going. So we have all these, you know, point nine, one point three. Um, but the only way you don't get like a big 
splash of five, eight, ten foot candles up here is by doing this by, you know, one here, you know, it's a little bump up around it, but, um, and there, we actually, there are ratios from min to max that we were trying to hit uh, and so forth. And, um, That's fine. So the building is going to look just like the current one, right? That nice red barn cladding and um, yep. yeah. Yeah, it's going to have the W web sign up there. The one so the sign will look just like the one I can see from 91. Correct. Upgraded, yes. Uh, John, we do have the sign package that you could show them. Yep. Uh, no, the architectural elevation doesn't have it. Thank you. I'm going to have to, I did not have that one open. So, but I have it. I can, there I we go. Share if needed. I have the technology, I think. Oh, this is, this is in there. I think if you go to the last, last PDF, you can show them what there the building looks like. Yeah. You want to go to the last page of that, John? Oh, yeah. So, right. So, there's existing. And oh, here it is on the building center. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, the one thing to note, we are actually uh, building this building in two phases. Obviously, the, the one existing building is going to be there. They're going to remain operational. We're going to build the roughly 15,000 square foot addition. And then what we're going to do is go back into their old warehouse and their old self-serve. And we're going to uh, almost deconstruct that entire building and build it new uh, so that they can go back and get their warehouse uh, to maximize their height. Because if you saw that last picture that John showed, um, it's a, um, an awkward angle. So they're, we're trying to maximize the roof, roof there for their warehouse. So. Okay. Does any members of the board have any questions? I got one last question. I feel like Columbo. Just one more thing. <laughs> uh, I, I, this is great because I've known FW Web forever. They, they're a family name. With, with the mention of the vehicular access uh, circulation, knowing, I mean, this picture in our heads, as you can see, I'm, I'm right on Canal Street. The amount of traffic that is already coming out of that area coming up there, and then you have the new outlet, plus you have GS Precision. I was wondering, with your deliveries and your shipment, first of all, how many employees are you looking at the, for this hypothetic to, to employ yeah. it that way? Yeah, so I'm looking at traffic safety and all this other stuff, and the sidewalks and all that other, everything else up that way. Yeah, you bet. Um, so um, a bunch of stuff there, but uh, eight current employees forecasting for this 12. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and again, so there's actually an interesting piece to this, um, which I'll get there. But um, so that 45 number um, of uh, um, vehicles, um, mm -hmm. you know, you've got the 12 employees, you have, um, uh, you know, a fair number of um, deliveries, you know, but I don't know, I think that was single digits, um, mm -hmm. you know, UPS, you know, FedEx, you know, so on, right. that's, that's existing. Um, right. And then uh, when they first, you know, said, well, I think we're looking at 60, you know, as a forecast. And I kind of said, well, we're building this great big building. How is it we're only kind of getting to 60 sort of thing? Right. And the, the, there's an effect there on the trucks. And it's all these big trucks are coming to this site kind of anyways. Mm -hmm. Now they may be a dedicated semi, you know, WB67 load that's just coming to this site. Similarly, their trucks, you know, they right. load in the morning and off they go, but those are big straight trucks. So it's not like, you know, they may go to a whole lot more stops, or but um, it's actually more efficient. I mean, they're getting more goods right. on each truck coming to the site type of thing. Um, so I don't know. I just thought that was kind of interesting. There's one little piece of things. I mean, that's like, you know, probably goes to this, you know, efficiencies of scale and all that stuff. But um, sort of going back to your, you know, kind of line of thought on the, GS Precision, you know, Route 5, um, 
the outlet uh, that's out there too. And you have, they're, 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 that's going to be a lot of businesses going in there. And then the flow of traffic coming in and out and this pot, there's no sidewalks going up that way. You're going to have bike pads, a lot of other stuff. So now you're dealing with traffic and pedestrians. Well, I don't there. think Gary, let me interrupt you. I don't think that what happens on John Sites Drive is um, part of what we can discuss. I oh, think- no, because it mentioned about pedestrian and vehicular. So I was just trying to get well, an idea I of the think, flow. I think pedestrian within, within their site. And- yeah, it says within their site, but I'm just looking at the flow of it in and out because... Like I said, you have GS. I think Country Kitchen is still there. Yep. I don't so know what they're doing. There's another lieutenant. I have a colonel on that too, which um, uh, again, to, to my mind, it, it kind of made sense. And that, um, and I, I understand what you're saying. Um, so yes, G, um, John Sykes doesn't have a sidewalk. However, it was actually built extremely wide. It's like 34 or 35 feet wide. Right. So, you know, normal two lane traffic is 24, 12 foot lanes type of thing. So is it perfectly ideal? No, but it's a lot better than maybe other places um, in that there is a pretty good wide shoulder for a bike Earth. store. Yeah. Folks yeah, to kind of we, get out of the way. When GS Precision, um, I think I'm the only person on the board who was around when GS Precision expanded and this was discussed extensively, and that was one of the things that was pointed out, that um, there is, because the road is wide, there's plenty of room for people who walk or ride a bike. And I don't know how many people actually walk up there. Not very many, I don't think. Right, or take the bus, they, they bus up there, because I, I believe the buses go up that way, but yeah. So um, are there any members of the public who would like to comment? If you are, could you identify yourselves and give your name and? No, no members of the public have any comments? Any members of the board have any additional questions? Okay. Um, find this correct thing here. And I have a motion to. Um, project as submitted with the condition that they work with Efficiency Vermont and um, that they um, comply with the memo from the fire chief. I motion. Is that you can take, can you take down your um, screen share? Yes, I can. So let me uh, stop here, I think. Is, there we go. So motion. Is there a second? I'll second. second. <laughs> go ahead, Michael seconds. Michael. I'll second, I'll second. Don't put that hand, <laughs> slam it down. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to call for a vote if there are no discussion. All in favor, um, I'm going to call your name. Um, John? Aye. Michael? Aye. Gary? Aye. Nora? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Maya? Aye. So the vote is six nothing and your project is approved. And um, thank you very much. It was a great submission. Mm -hmm. I have to say it was one of the best that I've seen since I've been on the board. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, where do we have a link to go into deliberative session? Steve has sent around an email with the link. Um, so you folks should close the public hearing and uh, go into your emails and we'll open that. Okay. Um, is there a motion to go into deliberative session? I motion that we go into deliberative session. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, I'll, don't, Michael. don't we kind of have to close the meeting first? No, we have to close this meeting to go into. Right. Well, I have to, we have to move. If we were, okay. if we were in person, we would move to go right. into deliberative session. And um, I will, once we vote to do that, I will adjourn this meeting. Perfect. Does that make sense to everybody? I don't know Absolutely. if that's within Robert's rules, but that was my plan. <laughs> okay. All in favor of going into deliberative session, please indicate by raising your hand. Aye. Okay. That's so this, um, Brian, should I, should I adjourn or suspend? No, adjourn. Adjourn. So the November 17th meeting of the Development Review Board is adjourned. If there's no objection. Okay. Thank you. We'll Thank see you, you in deliberative session.